please come here. Come here, Carmen. People will believe you, Carmen. Of course, it's in a historical district, so you are very limited as to how big a mansion you can have. Yeah. It's 36 <laughs> feet wide. Yes. And so, anyway, it's a beautiful home, but I'm going to say this, Mary. It's a town home. It's not. Thank you, Carmen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. That's uh, Mary Landro um, uh, talking about the fact that she doesn't live in a mansion. She just lives in a $2.5 million house in Louisiana. Can't be a mansion, right? Nah, these Democrats, they're real people, baby. Uh, joining us now is Matthew Continenti, uh, editor-in-chief of the uh, Washington Free Beacon and contributing editor to the Weekly Standard. Matthew, how are you, sir? I'm well. How are you, Steve? I'm doing good, thank you. Um, before we get to, to this whole thing and your, your uh, piece, the, uh, the Macaca Democrats and why the GOP is winning in 2014, uh, what are your impressions as we watch uh, the, uh, the, the terrible incident unfold in Ottawa? Well, unclear. I mean, I, I don't think the Canadian authorities have, have been uh, very forthright with all the information going on. I don't think they are actually completely aware of what is happening. Uh, what the nature of the attack might have been. But I think it shows uh, the threat posed by ISIS. It's not just a threat that's in the Middle East, but it's also a threat that goes to homegrown jihadism. And I think the worst thing that can happen if indeed these attacks are revealed to be terrorism is people saying that the attackers are lone wolves. And the truth is there's a violent ideology uh, that takes strength and is empowered by the successes on the ground of the Islamic State. And so the way that I think cut down on attacks here is to defeat the Islamic State there. And unfortunately, that, that's not what we're doing. All right, um, well, well said. Let's get uh, to your piece here. And of course, Makaka is a reference, for those who don't know, to uh, George Allen uh, when he was running uh, for the Senate several years back. and he said the word macaca in a, at, a, at a crowd, at a, at a little speech, and that was the end of him. I still don't think I know what macaca means, but Democrats could get away with all kinds of things and nobody bats an eye in the media, correct? Yeah, well, not quite nobody. I think, I think the Democrats this year, in 2014, have shown themselves to be remarkably weaker candidates than the Republican challengers running against them. And for that reason, even the press is beginning to notice. I think one big moment was uh, just the other week when Alison Lundergan Grimes, who's running against uh, Senator Mitch McConnell in Kentucky, she refused to say who she had voted for uh, in the 2012 and 2008 elections. And that was such an unforced error on her part. Everyone knows she's a Democrat and she's a liberal. Uh, that even the White House press corps the next day was caught on camera laughing at her. So when, when the, even the White House press corps is laughing at Democrats, you know that the year is not shaping up as they might like it to. Right. And, and at the debate uh, last night, I think it was, uh, the, uh, the crowd in attendance uh, in New Hampshire started laughing at Gene Shaheen. Right. And there have been a lot of that. that that's happened often. In fact, it's also happened in Iowa where uh, Bruce Braley, who's running for that open seat in Iowa, and had... You mean, you really mean, you mean, you mean, you mean Bruce Bailey, according right. to uh, yeah. Michelle Obama and Bill Clinton, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know the Democratic candidate better than the, the Obamas do, apparently. But the, Braley, you know, he had got kind of his first gaffe, there have been many, his first gaffe was saying that Chuck Grassley, the renowned senator there from Iowa, much beloved, was nothing but a farmer. And whereas, you know, Braley, I'm a, I'm a real uh, lawyer, so I know what I'm to do in the Senate. Well, in the debate, when he said that the first person he would call if he were elected to the Senate would be Chuck Grassley, the audience started laughing. And the same too, thing, too, in uh, Colorado, where uh, Mark Udall, you know, he's, he's so devoted to the war on women line against his opponent, Cory Gardner, and bringing up uh, abortion rights and such, and uh, contraception, where, of course, Gardner has disarmed this attack very well by saying he wants uh, birth control to be available over the counter. But he, Udall has devoted himself to this line, the war on women, so much now that he's referred to by the press in Colorado as Mark Uterus. So uh, in all of these races, you see the Democrats becoming punchlines, which for me as a conservative 
is a very new development because for the last 10 years or so, I've been in Washington, it's been the Republicans who have been the punchlines. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we'll see how this translates uh, in uh, less than two weeks, probably around 10 days at the polls. Matthew, always great to talk to you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Matthew Conton Eddy, uh, editor in chief of the Washington Free Beacon and uh, contributing editor to the Weekly Standard. All right, when we come back, the one, the only, retired Army Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Peters will be here, and uh, we'll get his take on what uh, is taking place up in Canada today. Don't miss it, Newsmax Television.